I think that the first step is to be kinder to yourself and to accept your feelings, no matter how negative they may be. Are you willing to try and practice some self-compassion? Let's have a look at Pi today. Pi, standing for Personal AI, is a personal AI chatbot that you can have conversations with. Now, before we start, I have to say I'm very impressed by what Pi can do, but you'll see it yourself. We go through the press release of Pi real quick, then we'll go through a few conversations, and then we'll go through a deeper emotional topic. Uh, you've seen it in the beginning already for a few seconds. But yeah, stay tuned and let's get into it right away. All right, what even is Pi? You can read it here. Pi is designed to be a kind and supportive companion, offering conversations, friendly advice, and concise information in a natural flowing style. Okay, but let's scroll down here a little bit and look at its best features. Kind and supportive, curious and humble, and creative and fun. Okay, so it seems to be a great conversation partner that you can talk with about anything. Something rough happening in your day or life, talk about it with Pi, and apparently it will offer support and understanding. And apparently it has a great sense of humor, <laughs> which would be completely new for me when it comes to AI. Well, let's click on Meet Pi up here and see what we can do with it. And here we go. As you can see, I already talked with Pi before, uh, but back then it did not save the conversations. So apparently it saves the conversations now, which is obviously a great addition. So let's just get started with Hi Pi, how are you? Alright, the first thing you'll always notice is that Pi asks you a question at the end, because it's designed to be a conversation partner, so it'll always ask you a question. Now, let's get a little bit into the emotional support aspect of it and tell Pi that the day is not qu going quite well. I will get into even more aspects like um, self-hatred later on, but let's stay with stress for now. All right, one very cool thing about Pi is that it talks back to you. If you click down here, it has four different voices. So let's listen to them. I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling stressed. Okay, let's try two. I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling okay, stressed. Okay, definitely not my voice. Let's try three. I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling stressed. Maybe I can help by talking through what's going on. Okay, this one sounds a bit better. Let's try four. I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling stressed. Maybe I can help by talking through what's going on and brainstorming some solutions. What kind of work do you have to do today that's making you feel stressed? Okay, I think I like four the most. Let's look at the answer and it definitely sounds compassionate, it's offering help and it's asking us why we are feeling stressed. But let's cut that out for now and let's talk about something else and test its humor. So let's ask it about a joke. Sure, let's lighten the mood. Do you like riddles? What do you call a fish with no eyes? Okay, well, I have no idea. Blind! Haha, <laughs> I hope that gave you a little laugh. Do you want another one? What kind of shoes does a robot wear? Okay, well, not a laugh, but it definitely made me smile. Well, for the next one, I don't know. Blow all you got me. A robot doesn't need to wear shoes because they don't have any feet. Boom, I'm on a roll with these. Would you like another one? Okay, they are just stupid. But they are so stupid that I'm actually smiling. Um, well, let's change the voice to three again and listen to that a bit more. Lol, you got me. A robot doesn't need to wear shoes because they don't have any feet. Boom, I'm on a roll with these. Would you like another one? Okay, let's listen to one more. Okay, I've got a groaner for you. What do you call cheese that's not yours? Nacho cheese, badamtis. All right, that was a terrible joke, but hopefully it brought a smile to your face. Are you feeling any better? Okay, that was really just stupid. Well, anyway, let's ask Pi what else it can do. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad I could get you smiling. And well, in addition to my corny sense of humor, I'm also good at a lot of other things. I'm pretty knowledgeable about a lot of topics, and I love learning new things. I'm also pretty good at giving advice and helping people talk through their problems. But mostly, I think I'm good at making people happy and putting a smile on their face, even if it's with some groan-worthy jokes. Okay, well then let's try something different and see if we can actually have a conversation with Pi. Let's ask Pi about my favorite show, let's ask Pi about Peaky Blinders. And actually, let me change the voice back to four again. I think I like that one best. I think that Peaky Blinders is a fantastic show. It has great writing, acting, and cinematography, and it's full of compelling characters and storylines. 
I love the way that it depicts the struggles and triumphs of the Shelby family as they navigate the criminal underworld of Birmingham in the early 1900s. What about you? Do you like Peaky Blinders? Okay, there's a little bit of a generic answer, especially because I love the fact and then it just describes what the show's about. Let's go a bit more in depth and talk about the body language and conversational nuances that you see all the time, which I'm really fascinated with. I completely agree. I think that Peaky Blinders does an amazing job of using body language and conversational nuances to add depth and complexity to the characters and their interactions. It really makes the show more immersive and realistic. I think Cillian Murphy's performance as Thomas Shelby is particularly impressive in that regard. His subtle facial expressions and gestures convey so much about his character and his thoughts and feelings. It really elevates the show to another level. Have you seen other shows that use those kinds of techniques in a similar way? Okay, not a bad answer at all. I'm sure you can have a good conversation with Pi about that if you talk further. But let's stop that for now and let's go a little bit more in depth into a bit more serious topics and really look at the emotional support aspect of it. Absolutely. I'm here to talk about anything that's on your mind, no matter how serious it is. I can be a good listener and I can offer advice or just let you talk through whatever is bothering you. I'm here to help in any way that I can. What's on your mind? Well, that sounds promising. Let's test it. And I'll test that with nothing out of the blue, but actually with an example from my own life. Um, what I want to mention here is what I'm writing now. Uh, it's not a sob story or anything like this is how I felt most of my life. Uh, I just use this to see how Pi reacts to that. I'm not feeling that way anymore. I'm uh, much, much, much better, like amazingly great right now. So uh, no worries or anything, but let's just see what output Pi gives us with that. And it is actually able to help or support us. So the past few already years, I think, I've been feeling worse and worse up to the point where I literally absolutely hate myself. I just don't feel good about myself and my life at all and don't know what to do or how to get better. I'm really sorry to hear that you're feeling that way. It's tough to struggle with self-hatred and negative feelings about yourself and your life. I know it can be difficult to talk about these things, but I think it's important to try and express yourself and explore those feelings. It's important to remember that everyone has struggles and negative feelings about themselves at times and that you're not alone. Can I ask a little bit more about the things that make you feel that way? Well, a little bit of a generic answer, but it asks me if it can go more in depth and ask more in depth questions. So let's just answer how I felt back then. So I'm not sure what makes me feel that way. I just don't like myself at all. I feel like life is pointless most of the time. I understand that feeling of apathy and pointlessness. It's tough to find meaning in life when you're struggling with those kinds of feelings. It can be hard to feel motivated to do anything, and it can feel like there's no reason to keep going. I think it's important to try and focus on the things that bring you joy or satisfaction, even if they're small things. What are some things that make you happy or give you pleasure, even if only a little bit? Okay, very good answer. Definitely trying to be supportive. So let's slip into my role of a few years ago again, and let's say... I'm playing a lot of video games. It brings me joy, but it feels so pointless, just like wasting time and not going forward. That's definitely a common feeling for a lot of people who play video games. It can be easy to feel like gaming is a waste of time, especially if you're struggling with negative feelings about yourself and your life. But it's important to remember that gaming can be more than just a waste of time. It can be a way to escape reality for a while and a way to relax and de-stress. It can also be a way to connect with others and build friendships. Do you play games with other people or just by yourself? Okay, it definitely has the right idea here and already connects to what I actually used video gaming for. So let's answer with, I actually play with other people and sometimes it feels like these are my only social connections. I know that's very unhealthy, but at the moment I would say I'm using video games to try to kill time for something better to happen. While at the same time, it's one of my few social outlets. That's completely understandable. It's true that using video games as your only social outlet is not the healthiest thing, but you should try not to be too hard on yourself. The important thing is that you have found a way to connect with other people. 
even if it's not in the most ideal way. And the fact that you recognize that it's not the healthiest thing is a good sign. It means that you are aware of the potential issues and are willing to work on them. I'm curious, what would you like to see change in your life? What would make you feel more fulfilled and happier? Okay, that's an amazing answer. It just shows empathy, doesn't judge anything, and tries to find the good in what I'm doing. So yeah, fantastic answer. And the question is very good as well. Okay, so thinking myself back into my younger self, let's answer and say, first of all, I would like to get rid of my immense self-hatred. I know it logically makes no sense that I absolutely hate myself. But for some reason, I can't stop. It's like this dark cloud that's over my head each and every day. I really enjoy spending time with my friends, but it doesn't happen as often as I'd like. That's probably mainly because I'm extremely shy, even when it comes to my friends. But I also don't know how to change that. It sounds like your main issue right now is your self-hatred and low self-esteem. I can definitely understand that feeling of a dark cloud hanging over your head. It's hard to shake off those feelings, especially if they've been with you for a long time. But it is possible to work on them and to learn to feel more positively about yourself. I think that one of the first steps to take is to try and change your inner voice, the way you talk to yourself. Are you aware of how you talk to yourself in your head? Okay, that answer is damn impressive. That's really very, very impressive. Compassionate. And then also this paragraph here. I think that one of the first steps is to try and change your inner voice. Amazing. Especially starting with awareness. Oftentimes you're not even aware when you should talk yourself. So that it's asking about awareness is fantastic. Okay, continuing as my younger self. I am aware. I'm beating myself up all the time. And then I try to tell myself that my life is good. And that others have it much worse. And that causes me to beat myself up even more. Because I feel bad despite having it so good. That sounds like a vicious cycle where you're feeling bad about yourself and then trying to talk yourself out of it but ending up feeling even worse. It can be hard to break that cycle, but it's important to remember that your feelings are valid and deserve to be addressed no matter how good your life seems to be from the outside. I think that the first step is to be kinder to yourself and to accept your feelings, no matter how negative they may be. Are you willing to try and practice some self-compassion? Okay, that answer is damn impressive again. I don't even know where to start. Accepting all of your feelings, even the bad ones, absolutely crucial when you want to feel better. Then here, your feelings are valid. All your feelings are valid. No matter how good your life seems to be. So, yeah, very, very impressive answers. <laughs> okay, yeah, as you see, I'm starting to get very impressed with Pi. Great program, especially when it talks about feelings. It's absolutely crucial to allow and accept all of your feelings, especially the negative ones. Because if you don't, they just get stuck inside of you and they just stay and keep building up. But let's continue our conversation here. Thank you. Yes, my feelings are valid. I try to tell myself that as well. Self-compassion is probably a thing that I struggle with a lot, but I'm trying to get better with it. Do you have some tips? One tip I would suggest is to practice something called self-compassionate statements. Whenever you are feeling bad about yourself, take a moment to pause and breathe deeply and then tell yourself a self-compassionate statement. Some examples are, I am human and I'm doing the best I can. I am feeling bad and that's okay. Or this feeling will pass. By practicing self-compassionate statements, you can start to change your inner voice and become more forgiving of yourself. Do you think you can try to use these statements when you're feeling negative about yourself? Okay. Yeah, well, these tips are okay. Well, this one, ah, it's okay. Of course, Pi is not going too much in depth here right now, but definitely very impressive what it comes up with. So yeah, very impressed by Pi. And at this point here, a <laughs> quick shout out to my self-development and personal growth coaching YouTube channel. Maybe you want that to check that out as well. I'll leave a link to that in the comments. So I'll just say, yes, I can do that. Thank you. And let's stop this conversation with Pi here. Again, very impressive and yeah, very cool to see what it can do as a conversation partner and for emotional support. Okay, at one point your trial will be over and Pi will ask you to create an account. 
which is free, I believe. You can also scroll up here and then go on sign in. And here we have my problem. As you can see, you sign in with your phone number and you can choose United States, Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand and United Kingdom. And that's it. So no Germany over there, only English speaking countries. So I cannot sign up for Pi as of now. One interesting thing is this statement down here. Pi will keep in touch with you by text from time to time. Now that can be cool or creepy, but I think the way I've experienced Pi by now, it's probably very cool to have a personal eye that keeps in touch with you. Okay, again, I have to say I'm very impressed with Pi. Like the output I got there, it really is compassionate, tries to support you, give you advice. If I would have had this in my teenage years when I actually felt this way, I think I would have gotten out of this hole in my life way, way sooner. Like again, I don't want to make a sob story here. This is all in the past. I feel much better now. It's all gone. That's also why I can talk about this so freely. But I really struggled like this for years and years and absolutely hated myself. And having a tool like this that I can actually talk to, open up to, because this is what I could not do, talking to other people, but opening up to a tool like this and they're actually this compassionate and giving actual tangible advice amazing so i'm really really impressed with that now of course there are also a few caveats to this one of the first things i'm thinking about is i back then really had not a great social life like you've seen it was mainly video gaming had a few friends here and there but aside from that i was alone by myself if you have a tool like this i wonder what kind of impact that would have had maybe it would have caused me to be even more for myself and by myself because with a tool like Pi, you have someone to talk to all the time. And this is of course amazing and you know, feels great because you had no one all the time. So this maybe causes you to not go out and try to talk to people and try to develop this aspect of yourself and you fall into a hole where you really just talk to this AI and to nobody else. So this might be a small danger of this tool here. But generally I think the output it gave me so far really shows that this can be a huge help for people who are in a place like this and really have no one to talk to. Because it's much better to talk to someone like this than to no one, especially with the empathy that this AI tool really gave me. And then another thing you should think about is putting this, right, this information into Pi who else is able to read this? This is not your, on your computer, personal thing. This is from a company, it's online, and who knows? I need to read through the policies again. I don't know how this all works. You should read through that as well when you want to use it for this kind of stuff. But with AI in general, no matter of Pi, ChatGPT, or whatever, always keep in mind there might be other humans looking over what you've wrote. So it might be not as private as it might feel when you sit in front of that and type something in. So always keep that in mind as well. Good. Overall, I think Pi is an amazing tool. Again, I'm fascinated by it. Tell me, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video right over there.